Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. It is great to have you here another day plugging in to get charged up on some electric news. You're making the great choice, and I just I just want to remind you of that. Also, if you enjoy learning about EVs, if you're EV curious or you know an EV friend who might be curious, send, a, send them our stuff. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, leave us a comment about what you're interested in, because that really cannot be undervalued. That does a lot for us. Also, feel free to review us on Apple Podcasts. Um, yeah, I can't undervalue how how important it is to know how we're doing and for you to show that you enjoy our work. So just wanted to note that in the top of today's episode, in which we will be talking about battery prices. If you're into EVs or if you're not, in, you should know that they run on batteries and that battery technology is still developing and we're learning a lot about it. And pricing does continue to be a major factor that influences the speed and the scale of the EV transition, the cost of EV batteries. And the price of these packs doesn't just affect the MSRP, the price that you're paying when you pick it up from the dealership lot or click confirm purchase online on the automaker's website. It also determines the accessibility, the market competitiveness, and ultimately the adoption rate of EVs. Luckily, in recent years, battery prices have been going down. Let's get into the facts of all this right now on another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hey everyone, by the way, if I didn't mention it, my name's Francie. Uh, so I did cover this topic earlier this year, and the big storyline was that the price of lithium-ion battery packs had dropped to an all-time record low of $139 per kilowatt hour. As a reminder, the energy storage is measured in kilowatt hour, and kilowatts is how it measures the actual energy. So just keep that in mind. Energy storage, kilowatt hour, energy moving into an EV for instance, kilowatts. So according to analysis by Bloomberg NEF, which is a research organization that examines the data of energy and industries and economic implications, they found that the battery demand across EVs and stationary energy storage, of course, because batteries are used in a lot of different places, is definitely still growing. And they rep reported a growth pace of 53% year over year, reaching 950 gigawatt hours in 2023. Funny enough, considering we stated how prices have hit an all-time low, the lithium ion price, the lithium prices, excuse me, reached a high point at the end of 2022, $151 per kilowatt hour. In terms of the prices as well, I do want to mention what is significant, which is the talks of tariffs. Uh, I'm in the US, so I'm going to stay specific to that, but there are other countries and um, nations that are enacting tariffs on everything to do with EVs and EV batteries and the resources that go into them as well. The tariff rate on lithium ion EV batteries has the, the Biden administration, the current presidential administration in the US has noted that it will increase from 7.5% to 25% in 2024, that's this year. And then the tariff rate on lithium ion non EV batteries will increase from the same 7.5% to 25% in 2026. The tariff rate on battery parts will increase from that same number, seven and a half to 25% this year, 2024. And then for natural graphite and the permanent magnets, this will increase from a 0% tariff to 25% in 2026. And then a tariff rate for the other critical materials will increase to 25% from zero as well in 2024. So we're seeing tariffs on all these things that go into EVs. Of course, there's a huge push to say, hey, bring this to the US borders and let's get a hold of our battery market that we you know, aren't really strong, the strongest contender in it. But let's get back to maybe kind of a more broad, holistic scale. I just wanted to give you that context because I do think it was relevant. The most affordable type of EV battery we have access to right now is the LFP battery. That is the lithium iron phosphate battery. And it is arguably, at this point in time, the most important for mass scale EV adoption. If you disagree, let me know. We'd love to know your thoughts. This is the battery that is put into the most affordable EV models right now and also used in energy storage. A bit more information about this battery type when it comes to LFP batteries. These require a good amount of thermal management and way more per kilowatt hour than other batteries. 
They also have to be charged fully, that's to 100%, which we usually do not encourage, once in a while to calibrate them. This is because they have a flatter voltage curve. I'm getting into the weeds a little bit here, which basically makes it difficult for the battery management system to know how much energy is available. So by charging it up to 100%, it makes things pretty straightforward for that system. In return, they typically have a flatter charging curve and a high cycle count and are generally forgiving when it comes to charging high. That's why we kind of say you can beat them up. You can charge them uh, to 100%. You can DC fast charge them a lot. That's okay. They're also very robust and stable and have less danger of thermal runoff. So those are some of the facts about LFP batteries. Example of LFP vehicle models available in the US right now is the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, the Rivian standard pack, check out the new charging video on out of spec reviews as well, and the Ford Mustang Mach-E standard range model. Most of these are made by CATL, Contemporary Amperix Technology, which is a Chinese company, which means that they do not qualify for the EV tax credit if they are used in EVs because of all the reasons that I kind of started the episode with. Also, to get the tax credit, 50% of the battery has to be assembled in the U.S. And I'm pretty sure the, the materials have to come from a specific source as well. And the U.S. doesn't really favor China at this point in time. Tesla is actually planning LFP production in the U.S. as a joint venture with CATL. Ford has also been in talks about this with CATL licensed technology. And as you might understand, CATL is one of the world's largest manufacturer of LFP batteries for electric vehicles. LFP prices are now at $75 per kilowatt hour in China. If you remember at the start of the video, I said that it hit an all time low at 139 kilowatt hour uh, for the lithium iron battery packs. So that's, you know, just a little bit of a reference point. This is considerably under the benchmark price of $100 per kilowatt hour, which was passed in October of 2023. At this price, EVs can be priced lower than combustion cars. This is a major milestone when it comes to EV adoption. We're seeing more and more competitive pricing and figuring out the right battery chemistry, battery technology to use is key there. At this price, we can see more EVs come into the hands of owners and maybe owners who don't really care about uh, maintaining battery health so you can behave differently with have different charging behaviors. In China, EVs are already the cheapest drive chain and that can't be said for all other countries, of course. It may take a while for these price decreases to spread outside of China and affect the rest of the global market as we just have seen. Nickel battery prices also continue to fall. These are the types of batteries that we often see in the long range and performance battery electric vehicles. They come in a few different variations. They are currently priced between $85 and $100 per kilowatt hour in China. Batteries continue to become cheaper due to multiple reasons. Three of them are scale of production, Batteries are made in larger quantities than ever before. The economies of scale, you're getting more things automated, standardized, manufactured, and the sourcing as well is becoming more and more standardized. Raw material prices. Lithium prices continue to fall after that spike in 2022 that I noted. And then the design and manufacturing improvements. Innovations in manufacturing processes have significantly improved the efficiency and reduced costs of EV battery production. Techniques such as automation, improved material utilization, and streamlined assembly processes contribute to lower overall production costs. China has been a bit of an insular competitive market for this because other countries and other nations, other governments have said, no, China, you cannot sell your product here. So China has a, had a bit of an arms race within their own market that has helped them to become such a competitive battery manufacturer in the world. I mean, they are pretty unmatched. Would love to see that kind of market competitiveness spill out into other countries and also more and more news on battery recycling, because I think that will have a huge effect on the life cycle, of course, of EVs and EV batteries, but also the sourcing of the materials, the recycling of the materials, which sometimes even get higher quality when recycled. But this is not really an episode about battery recycling, which I would love to have tons of de deep dives into that. We've hosted that before but I digress. I want to see what y'all think about that. What do you think is key to bringing down the price of batteries? What have you seen in the trends that make you think that we're moving towards a spot where the price of the EV batteries, the costs of making them will be less and less inhibitory to EV adoption? Do you think that battery prices will continue to fall or will they stagnate? Let me know. 
Thank you for plugging into another episode of the Out of Spec podcast. I do think that battery technology is so very interesting and love just to cover this point in time of what we're looking at here. If you are in another country or even if you're in the US, let me know what you know about EV batteries. And maybe we can share all of our fun facts and thoughts in the comments below. Again, if you enjoyed it, let us know. Thank you so much for plugging into the Out of Spec podcast. I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit of information about EV batteries. I'll see you next time on the next episode. Drive safe, stay charged. Bye-bye.